All right, gonna test out a new camera system today. Got a GoPro, and uh, if you might have noticed from some of my other videos, my camera was having some sound issues and some coloring issues. It kind of faded in and out on the color. So hopefully this will uh, be a little bit better. Today the subject is going to be thinning. Uh, there's always a question on the famous Mr. Murray Carter on how he sharpens and how it applies to a regular knife. Most Japanese knives are laminated, meaning the side steels are softer than the core steels, which allows you to sharpen the side of the blade more efficiently, making it thinner and allowing the cutting edge to be thinner. Uh, in most of your normal cutting tools, this is not really a, uh, a normal practice because the steel is one homogeneous piece of steel. So in this case we have a Spyderco Delica. As you can see I've ground this secondary bevel as they call it here, the primary bevel being the cutting edge. And we've started that with a 220 grit stone. This bevel was very thick and I wanted to thin it out because it was kind of lopsided and uh, it still is a slight off angle per side on its actual slope. I can't even that up exactly perfect but uh, we're going to finish off grinding the sides of it and sharpening this blade. And I'm going to kind of show you the techniques involved with that. This is my 800 grit Kohetsu stone. This is a newer stone in my collection. It goes with the 2000 Kohetsu. I tried doing a video on these when I first got them, but it's just taking me a little bit to get a feel for these stones and really understand them. Didn't want to give a false impression of them. So uh, now we'll be a little show and tell and a little understanding of um, the sharpening of the grinds and such. So we're going to start by flattening the stone. These Kohetsus are very easy to flatten. Uh, they're a what they call fourth gen ceramic stone. They're very fast cutting, but they are a little softer. Kind of reminds me a bit of my King 1K in some ways, uh, but it is a whole lot faster than a King as far as cutting speed. So now we're going to go ahead and sharpen the secondary grind, which we're not really sharpening, we're thinning the secondary grind. As you can see, the stone removes metal quickly, produces a little bit of a slurry, and uh, has a great feel to it, good uh, audible feedback. And I think this is my first new video with uh, the sharpening base. A little quick base I threw together. And it's not really any better than my other one. But the other one was getting too much water absorbed into it and cracking and all sorts of stuff that I didn't want to happen.
Now the stone I used before this was the Imanishi 220. I've uh, done a review on that before. Really good stone. Really aggressive. Wears very fast. So you have to really watch your uses with it. And for being a softer stone, this one doesn't wear too quickly. Uh, it doesn't get ahead of you like a, like a king stone or like the Imanishi 220 where you're fighting the dishing of the stone to actually sharpen the blade. This, you don't have to worry about that as much. I still like to rotate my stone. That way I can make sure I'm uh, getting an even wear across the surface of the stone. Now the advantages to doing this are, uh, you know, when I started, this blade had a bevel that was probably at least as thick as the spine, you know, almost three millimeter wide bevel, and that doesn't do you any favors because you're that, that just simply means that your cutting geometry of the of the blade itself is very thick, so that's going to cause a lot of wedging, a lot of trouble for you to cut through something. So as you thin down the side of the knife, like I'm doing here. You allow a better cutting and an easier sharpening. That way you don't have to remove so much steel at the cutting edge to actually sharpen the knife. And it seems kind of unorthodox to do this, and it really only works with a saber ground blade like this. I mean, I'm not going to be pulling out my Endura, which is a flat ground blade, and trying to sharpen down the sides of it. That doesn't make any sense. But with a blade like this, where it has a saber grind to it, it makes complete sense because you're able to thin it down from the very thick geometry that it was to something a little more practical and useful and easier to maintain. Big thick bevels are never easy to maintain. They just make life a lot harder to make a knife sharp and to make it useful. This Three Sisters Forge Beast is kind of a great example of that. It's just a overly built knife that I mean, it's cool, but uh, it's not a cutting tool, in my opinion. It doesn't have a thin enough bevel to be a cutting tool. I'm going to do a little review on that, the customer requested. Um, you know, you can make them usable, you can make them sharp, but without having a good secondary bevel, which is the side of the blade here, without having a good geometry to that secondary bevel, then there's, there's really not much you can do for it. Imanishi kind of leaves some deep marks, so we're going to have to work a little extra here. Um, before I go too much further, this is uh, it's a well-used Spyderco. Um, the sides of it have, you know, your, your obvious scratching from being used a lot. If you take some scotch bright, with some fine scotch bright like this, and just drag it down the blade like that a few times both sides. And that'll just polish up the sides a little bit. It's not going to take out all the deep scratches, but it kind of helps with the cosmetic look of the blade. Get a 
figure if you're doing all this work to the bevel here, you might as well do something up there. So that's all it really takes, just a few passes per side with some fine scotch bright, and you can really clean up the side. Uh, spider coes are done with a rather coarse finish. You know, if you actually scratch up the side of your knife, you want to refinish it. One of the best ways I've found is to use some uh, 320 grit sandpaper pulling in one direction, and then you jump up to a piece of 2000 grit sandpaper and do the same thing. And it'll uh, it'll give it that that glossy satin finish that the spider coes come with. We're coming up on being about done with this little project, and we'll be able to move into the sharpening, which will be a lot more interesting. When I sharpen a blade like this, I, I'm not the one that likes to go for a high polish look. I actually like the coarser look of this 800 grit stone on the blade. It gives it a, a well used and working look, even though it's just been freshly sharpened. Trying to work out some minor imperfections on this side here. go ahead and lap it one more time. And you can see for the abrasive release of the stone, and for the amount of work we did, we just have a very small shallowing right there. There really wasn't much that was lost from the stone. And then if you can see this, I have a nice flat, smooth area in the center of my Atoma plate. Don't really know what to think about that yet. I mean, this is, a, this is an expensive diamond plate that works really well for lapping stones and grinding steel. But, uh, you know, this is my DMT Extra Extra Coarse, which I can see the shiny tips of all the dull diamonds. But this is my only spot where the diamonds are gone. And this plate is five years old. So, I understand the Atoma does a much better job at the same purposes. But... I have a hard time justifying the price difference for the longevity of the tool and for the little bit extra I get in lapping or metal removal um, I'm sure a brand new DMT would provide me all that and more but enough about that I'm going to go ahead and finish this up got a little mark on the side here need to work on
A little bit about the Kohates or Stones. These were developed for steels like Super Blue, Hat 40, SG2. Um, with the idea of being able to have a two stone system that allows you to sharpen and finish a blade at right about the grits that it needs to be. For more of these uh, particle metal alloys that have high concentration of wear resistance, they really like a, a coarser edge to them. And these two stones together kind of provide a, a real good toothy edge at just the right level of finish for most of those blades. Uh, are they the best for the job? Maybe, maybe not. But they are a good two stone option that I really like. Uh, they're said to be very liked in Japan. But, uh, We'll have to see what the future holds. So far, they're they're showing great performance and good cutting edges. But as I will talk later about the 2K, it's it's not always as sharp as I'd hope it would be. This 800 grit stone though is a very fast cutter. It easily keeps up with any of the other stones I have. The only stone that I think would probably be better would be the Nubatama Extra Extra Hard 1K uh, with a close following to the Shafton Pro 1K. But they're all such good stones it's really hard for me to say which one is better. I mean this one has some characteristics that I like more than the other two and then you know stones like this have characteristics that I like more than this one. So it's hard to pick one over the other. Uh, that's why I have them all here. I mean, in my bucket, I even have a good old King 1000. You know, sometimes the classics and the ones that have been the workhorses for the longest still have their place in a, a sharpening regiment. And with the same idea, you know, I'm using a softer stone here. Um, they are hard enough to do edge leading strokes on, but I do get a lot better of a resulting edge if I do edge trailing. So that's why I'm doing edge trailing strokes at this point. I can also push very hard and get that edge set quickly, which I may have underestimated a bit on the stone's ability because of how blunt the edge actually was. I think we're starting to get a burr here. The edge is starting to come together a little bit. I'll go ahead and rotate around like this. And as you notice, the water is real cloudy. I've only used these two times to sharpen, or should I say, I've sharpened two knives before this video started. And I mean, even with one knife sharpened, the water gets extremely cloudy with these stones. Just because they're a white colored stone, and anytime you lap them, uh, it looks like you spilled milk in there.
But as you can see, in one single stroke per side, how much metal gets removed quickly. And that was with a fair amount of pressure. I am trying to set the bevel in quickly. Alright, we have a good burr, so we're going to go ahead and move to the 2000 grit, and dare I say that these stones remind me a lot of natural stones, and especially natural aoto stones. And the reason I say that is because this 2K leaves a very mixed scratch pattern. It's a very dull finish, almost completely matte finish from this 2K stone, unless you really work on it and kind of let it dry out, and then you can build a little bit of uh, metal up on the surface, and that helps to kind of burnish and a polish. But for the most part, you get a very... Uh, matte finish that has kind of a, a regular scratch pattern to it like a natural stone so it's not perfect scratch lines you get a, a larger and a smaller one here or there and uh, kind of emulates the the effect you get from a natural stone I, I've sharpened side by side with my Monzen Aoto and I find that the edges are somewhat similar in how they feel as far as the toothiness uh, for a 2000 grit stone this is the type of edge it leaves is nearly like the edge I get off a 1000 grit king but it has a little something special to it when you use it with the 800 grit stone I don't know how to exactly explain it but it's pretty nice we're going to go ahead and continue with edge trailing strokes you can see a lot of metal removed in just one pass Remember, this is the primary edge we're cutting on, so or we're sharpening on. So we've moved from sharpening on the sides, which is thinning the blade down, to actually moving to the cutting edge that we are sharpening now. And this is to actually make it cut. And then our first process that we were showing was just to make it cut better. Stone tends to release grit quickly, like both do, uh, or like the 800 does too, but you definitely retain a certain degree of flatness. Like I was mentioning earlier with the 800, it doesn't dish out on you so fast that you have to worry about it as you're sharpening. What I'm doing now is inspecting the bevel, making sure I don't have any burrs. There's a little bit of a burr to one side here. I'm going to try and clean that up. Because the stone is meant for very hard steels, 
that are very wear resistant. Using it on a softer steel like this, which is you know, probably in the 58 to 60 range, uh, you're going to get a little more burring to the edge. It's a little harder to remove. The amount of burring that's there, uh, burring is burrs are a subject in themselves, but I will just say that the obsessive nature that most of us sharpeners have to remove the burr is almost unnecessary. Once you minimize the burr to a certain point, it's really negligent or uh, negligible as to its effect on the edge. So as long as you get it down enough, really doesn't matter and an edge like this which has just the itty bittiest burr to it could really be sent right to work you can use this knife without a problem and before I grab the paper and you can see with what little arm hair I have it just takes it clean off both sides shaving with ease it has a nice toothy edge to it that instantly bites into the skin. So it has a decent little level of sharpness as you can see. And usually what I like to do after after using these stones is use a little stropping and this really brings the edge out mainly because uh, if you look under a microscope when a stone releases a lot of abrasive you get a little abrasive that gets stuck into the grooves of the scratch pattern and so by kind of cleaning up that and a little bit of burr that's left at the edge you really improve the quality of the edge find more burrs. Hold on, what do we got here? There we go. So, a little strop there. Alright, that looks pretty good. You can see it's a little bit smoother. A little more controllable. But it's a good everyday use edge. Has enough toothiness to it where when you go to cut something you're not going to slide over it. It's going to bite into it and cut through it. So there you have it. Sharpening of a primary and secondary bevel. Um, your primary being your actual cutting edge and your secondary being the side saber grind of the blade. This is not applicable to all types of cutting tools, uh, but with a saber ground tool like this or Japanese traditional knives, this is definitely a possibility. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video.